Uh, be gentle with yourself. We can't hear that too often. We can't hear that too often because it's a deep, deep journey into the mind. And there's lots of ego resistance that's going to pop up when you really go for the target of joy, of happiness, of enlightenment. So we have a beautiful group of days this week to really dive into that experience for ourselves. And it's the prayer of my heart that um, anything that you truly desire the answer for, the insights, the awarenesses will come into your awareness. And the sooner the better. Delay is unknown in eternity, but tragic in time, so, so it's always been my motto, let's not delay this, let's really go for this. That's what we're here for, that's what the best use of time is with us. I recognize um, some faces from last year, and some, some new faces here, some people here that have been doing an intensive here for the last five or six days. Um, how many people are not familiar with uh, my teachings? Is, is this a first experience for you? Okay, got a few. That's good. And those of you I'm sure are familiar with Gary's teachings. That's one of the reasons that you're here too. Um, I'll just say a little note about that at the beginning. Um, uh, back several years ago, when Disappearance of the Universe was published and Your Immortal Reality was published, uh, I was doing my travels around the world and teachings and uh, people started asking me about those books. And um, I'd already reached a state at that point where I really didn't really read anymore, um, including even the Course, uh, so it was really not necessary for that. But I. I do remember skimming through and kind of just getting an intuitive feeling about the disappearance of the universe and uh, your immortal reality, and I just just had a big smile on my face. I was like, ah, Hartman and Persa are teaching the teachings that I've been sharing for almost two decades, and it was kind of fun to see it in print <laughs> at your local Barnes and Noble store or. To go see it, you know, at uh, Amazon.com or something, because uh, this wisdom is really precious and it's just beautiful. Uh, I know I <laughs> can feel the resonance of really deep, clear teachings, and I think a lot of times people that come to Gary's workshops and retreats and that are very, very much fans of these books are are that way because they have a very deep resonance of clarity. That's one aspect of them I think that are very helpful. They're very, very clear. They're very straightforward. They don't beat around the bush with a lot of uh, theoretical and theological mumbo jumbo. It's like, let's cut to the chase. Uh, give me the good stuff and give it to me direct. And that's one thing that I like about those teachings. And I think another aspect that touched me too initially when I glanced through it was I realized with Disappearance of the Universe it was based on eight years of interactions with Gary and with Art and Persa. And I'm, I'm a big fan of, of disclosure, of um, just pouring out your emotions um, and taking the mask off and just laying things out on the table. No matter how they look, just lay them out. Tell it like it is, or we could say, as it seems to be, uh, in your life. And I think that was something that was very touching as well, in the sense that um, it was like a great little dialogue going on between ascended masters and one that was uh, struggling and going through a lot of very difficult emotions and perceptions and so it's almost like a symbol of a dialogue between the human condition and the Ascended Masters. And I found that very, very helpful. Uh, because that of course reflects 
my journey and it reflects everybody's journey. Uh, we, as long as you believe in the ego, there's going to be a bit of this back and forth. You want what? You, you're guiding me to what? You, you said what? You know, there's going to be a bit of the ego reaction and resistance to these high teachings because the ego is the belief in separation and these high teachings are the teachings of, of forgiveness and oneness. And separation and forgiveness don't really have a meeting point and separation and oneness really don't have a meeting point because one is real, the oneness, and the separation isn't. So you can never really bring together reality and unreality. If you, if you could bring them together, then of course one would dissolve and disappear. And that's the basic teachings of A Course in Miracles, is that this is a teaching in ending dissociation. Ending the attempt of maintaining two irreconcilable thought systems. Love and fear do not go together. They may say in this world that oil and water don't mix. Well, I'll tell you one thing, love and fear, they just don't mix. And when you're experiencing the fear, then the love is pushed out of awareness. When you're experiencing the love, it's as if that's all that there is. That there never was anything else. You don't make it back to heaven or nirvana and then sit around and tell your war stories. I remember when I killed you, and then you killed me, and I got you back the next lifetime. And there's no, it's not like going to a 12-step meeting where you can kind of rehash over <laughs> all of the, do you know what I've been through? <laughs> Sit down, I'll tell you my story. There's just none of that in bliss. Uh, thank heavens. <laughs> it's just peace eternal. Just total peace and rest. This is great. I was in Australia doing one of these talks and the, the wind tried to blow the tent down when I was doing one of my movie gatherings, uh, exposing the ego. But uh, these look like nice strong steel beams. <laughs> I think we'll do okay for, for five days. No hurricanes in sight. So, again, I, I think um, that was something that was, was very... Uh, I had just a warm feeling reading uh, Disappearance and uh, Your Immortal Reality. And then traveling around the world, I've been doing this for almost two decades, so uh, it's just kind of fun to meet all the people and hear all the different thoughts and reactions. And uh, a lot of times I would go and stay with people and they would say, uh, Gary was here and I'd say, wow, that's great. And, they would say, yeah, this is good, 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 but I didn't like this and this and this. And it was kind of funny uh, because some of the things that was being spoke of was, I don't like this, this, and this, and it was like, uh, it's too uncompromising. And I remember I hear, we hear people say that the same thing about the Course. The Course is too uncompromising. And I thought, well, if we're here to discern between illusions and truth, or error and truth, this is something we want to be non-compromising. How can you be too uncompromising when you're working with a teaching that says the truth is true and nothing else is true? Uh, you know, or you read a lesson like 152, you know, the power of decision is my own, and, and he says that it, basically everything that you perceive in, the, in all of time and space is the result of your own decision. Everything, without exception. And he says, Jesus says in that lesson, you may think that this is too all-encompassing to be the truth, but he goes on to say, truth has no exceptions. So truth is without an opposite. And if we look at that in terms of forgiveness, we could say the same about forgiveness. You're not going to be able to accept partial forgiveness. It's not like horseshoes, you know, where if you get the, the shoe close to the, the pin, you get some, get some points of recognition or, you know, some of these games, you know, you get partial bonus recognition. It's not that way with forgiveness. It's, it's really all or nothing.